Hi, welcome back to Coding with Carl and the Zero to Android show. This is episode 42, which means we spent 41 hours delving into the depths of Java and Android Studio in pursuit of excellence and uh, proficiency in writing Android applications. Now, if you're new to the show, I have a YouTube channel, Coding with Carl, that's K and K. And this Zero to Android playlist here contains all the previous episodes of this show broken up into nice hourly chunks so that you can watch them at your leisure uh, at whatever speed of your choosing. It's a nice feature of YouTube. I like to watch them at double speed because I think it's funny and cool. Okay, uh, where were we? Last time on the stream, we were working on a scheduled task manager as we have been now for about five or six hours. And we have most of the functionality for this implemented. We have every day, uh, day of week and day of year. And the last one that we need to tick off, if you like, is day of month. Now, day of month, we've had uh, some discussion about on the stream before. And the consensus among you guys on uh, on Twitch, my wonderful viewers, is that if you uh, set a task for the 29th or 30th or 31st of a month, and that month contains less days than you've allocated, that it should be ignored. So I'm going to go with the viewer base and I'm gonna do that. But I'm also, I think, going to support an entry in that list that says last day of month. Now that might take us a little bit longer to implement because I haven't really thought it through yet. Uh, but that's, uh, that's something that we'll do today, I think. So what we're gonna need because of that I think is a, uh, a new set of values here in our uh, proto operation options. Now here we have day of month options. Oh, we do have it there. Okay, so I've already done that. That's good. Does that mean it appears in here then? It does. That might be a problem. That might cause a bug because that will royally screw up our logic that we wrote. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two sets of these. Um, and I'll call this day of month options. with last maybe and then this one I'll remove last from so let's yeah fingers are very cold today there we go yeah I think that's better and now we need to jump into our user interface here uh, prototype activity prototype yeah, so we have a uh, day of week and we have something else that is hidden uh, down here, spinner proto month and spinner proto day. And I think what we need to do is also support, um, we've got day of year, so we need D DOM as well, day of month. Uh, so I'm gonna break this constraint here as we did before. I'm going to move these down. I'm going to make these ones visible for now. So that I can see what I'm doing. Uh, what else have we got? This one. Visible. There we go. Okay, so let's move this down again. And we'll have, uh, same as, as usual, we'll have our text view. This will be constrained to the bottom of here uh, with a 16 margin. The text for this will be day, so it will be the same as this one. And we'll create a new spinner down here. And we will constrain this to here and we will put 16 margin all around it. And I 
think the width needs to be match constraint. Right? That look good? Looks good to me. Okay, so uh, let's have a think. We need the values for this now. So if we jump into entries here and array, we've got day of month options with last, right? Okay, and with this one, what we need to do, I wonder if I should set the visibility of these programmatically on start. Let's first of all, put that constraint back in. So now we have all the UI elements, uh, but we don't have IDs for them. So this is going to be proto, proto label, uh, D-O-M, day of month, uh, yes. And this is gonna be proto spinner, day of month. Proto spinner, day of month. Uh, yes. Okay, now let's jump into our prototype activity and look at the logic for it. So we have, is there anything to do with visibility in the onCreate before we do this on item selected stuff? Hmm. This. Okay, so it's all done in here. Right, so we have something new to do here. We have, if we copy this bit of code, now we need to do the logic that hides and shows things depending on what we're looking at. So if I jump over to op there, what the hell? Something very strange. There we go. Uh, so this is day of month position and the day spinner That will be gone. This will be gone. Okay, these gloves are restricting my motion somewhat. Hopefully when my hands warm up, I can take them off. Uh, okay, so we've got two new things that we need to do. Up here. Yeah. So we'll have a text view, which is a uh, day of, hmm. I think I've got two proto, uh, label proto day of months. Let's have a look. Don't want that, don't want that. We want activity prototype.xml. There we are. So it looks as if this is called label proto day of month. That should be day of year. And this one, uh, spinner proto day of year, that's fine. Okay. And that should have changed if we jump back to the prototype activity. Uh, day of year. Label proto day of year, that has changed, right? So if we do, uh, that should be day of year label now. So D2L year, oops. Day of year label. And now wherever we had a uh, day of month label, we will see in Word and change it to day of year label. Uh, next dot, next dot, next dot, there we go. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense. And then we'll copy these two. Uh, actually, this should be day of year spinner. And then we'll do the same again. So where we had day of month spinner, 
will see in Word a day of year spinner. Next dot, next dot. And then we can copy these two things just once, Carl. Uh, change year to month. Actually, let's do uh, that there. And then S, year to month. And we need to add the global thing because it appears twice on each line. Does it? Label proto day of month. Why is that missing? Let's have a look. DOM. Uh, I don't seem to be winning, do I? Label proto. Proto label DOM. This is where you need to start like using naming conventions and sticking to them, I think. Proto label DOM. Okay. All right, so now we have those. And these two need to be hidden um, in everything except this one. So let's do the same again. S year with month and global. Oops. There. Actually, that was wrong. There, there, and in this one, they should be visible. Uh, so those two, ah, actually I was wrong. It's this one, they need to be visible in. So then we replace gone with uh, S gone with visible. Okay, let's run that and see if it works. But I think the first thing we have to do is hide them. Let's have a look at the current behavior. So this should, yeah, okay. So it looks as if this code is being executed even when we uh, we run on create because it's auto selecting the first entry. So that's okay. So let's look day of week. That's right. Day of month doesn't do anything and day of year is right. So why doesn't day of month do anything? Because we haven't even run this code yet. That's why. Gradle build running. And now we wait. Installing APKs. There we go. Now we're running, okay. Uh, schedule tasks. See, this has popped back up now. So we're missing something, aren't we? Uh, this looks like, does it have a last entry? Yeah, it's, this is our day of month spinner. Uh, so that is, yes, that's why. And that's probably because it's proto spinner DOM or something. There we go. Okay, try again. Schedule tasks, day of week works, day of month, not working, day of year working. Hmm. What is going on with day of month? Hmm. 
I think we set it to visible and then set it to invisible immediately after. So yeah, there it is, look. Uh, so we have a, a margin issue here that we need to fix. Uh, this needs to be constrained to the left-hand side and have a margin of 16. And then everything should be rosy. Winner, we have it. Okay, so next thing to do is make sure that we're passing through the right things to uh, the next. Yeah, we need to make sure that we're passing stuff through in here. So let's grab those uh, those references to these UI elements here, day of month, and jump down into the next function. Uh, click select task. So this is where. Uh, this gets run when we click on select task. Uh, we can remove final because we don't need it. Uh, and then, yeah, so we have the same issue we had before. We've got mislabeled things. So I'm just going to comment that out for now. And we'll change uh, month spinner and day of month spinner. Month spinner is right, it's day of month spinner that's wrong. Uh, okay, so let's do day of month spinner and uh, see in a word day of year spinner and then next dot next. Okay, previous. Great. So that's that sorted, and now we can uh, d to capital S, no, D to capital S, D to capital T, and we can use these now. If we come down here, we've got uh, one missing, and that's this, and this should be operation day of month position. Uh, input days will be the day of month spinner, and the operation will be focus lib uh, operation, what is it? Prototype day of month. Okay, so that should pass through. All the way to the end now. And we can get rid of this to do. Uh, let's change the text in here to something more meaningful, uh, like uh, unsupported operation for prototype. And then that's good. So if we jump through now to focus lib, wrong shortcut there. This is where we need to finish up. We have this to fix, but we're going to leave that until we've finished. Uh, we have day of week and we have day of year, but we now need case focus lib dot uh, prototype day of month. Okay, and I think that that does need to go there. Okay. Right. What does this code do? It puts a entry into the slot table. Uh, so let's Let's think about what we actually need to do. We have some logic that we wrote yesterday, right? If we jump into uh, epoch test.js, look down at the bottom, and we'll put this up in the middle so that the people on YouTube can see it. 
timestamp top of year. So we can get the top of year, second elapsed, days elapsed, and then we loop through our month number of days array until it passes. Yeah, and that should give us the month. And what happens if it falls on a month boundary? That is an interesting question. We'll figure that out once we've uh, put the logic in. Uh, so what we're going to add, what we're going to put into here, we've got uh, what's in this content values? Size four. So the size is always going to be four. Let's copy this code. And goal ID, that stays. Timestamp, that's what we're after. Yeah, so that was actually a bad one because that uh, relies on it's this. This is the kind of thing we're looking for. Right, so first thing we need to do is we're trying to figure out in this bit of code whether the timestamp that we're looking at, i.e. the uh, Is that right? Top of working day. Yeah, whether the top of the working day is applicable. So what we need is int day of month so that we can do it, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, I have drank far too much coffee today and my brain is uh, short circuiting, which isn't helpful. So let's have a think. We, What we want to add in is we want to say something like if uh, top of working day is equal to Is equal to what? I am really short circuiting today. Uh, right, so how do we get the day of the month again? We have a timestamp. So we have the timestamp, which is the top of the working day, and then we can get the year from that timestamp, can't we? Right, so let's start with uh, int top of year equals, uh, I think it's in focus lib, isn't it? Get top of day local. We have a top of year function. So that's kind of in this. So maybe we should uh, to do create a top of year method, and then we can do. Well, it's quite easy to work out the top of the year, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I think it has to be done this way. We have to take into account the leap years and stuff. Yeah, let's create that function now, actually. Public static function uh, get top of year equals, it's not a function at all, it's an integer. And 
it returns a timestamp, so we should do that. And I'm not working in JavaScript, so that's int uh, source ts, and then we'll do we'll grab this. Return top of year TS. Uh, so this is slightly different now, isn't it? Because the year is always going to be the current year. How did we get that before? year from timestamp. Source TS. And then we do that, 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 and that returns as the top of the year. That's not local, is it? That's not local, All right? So let's just bear in mind that that isn't local. Uh, then let's get rid of that to do. We can come back up here. So now we have our top of working day, and to get the top of the year from it. We can do focus lib dot get top of year ts and pass in top of working day. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then seconds elapsed equals timestamp minus top of year ts, right? So seconds of year elapsed equals top of year no it's uh, top of working day minus top of year then we can do days elapsed equals um, seconds of year elapsed divided by 86,400, which of course is the number of seconds in the day. And then we do this loop. Uh, so we'll do four int i equals zero, while i is less than days elapsed i plus plus it's already defined in this scope is it okay so we'll make that j then okay then um Working day, working month, and another iterator. Okay, I used a while loop. So um, int working day equals not. Int uh, working month equals not, and int j equals naught. This is going to be while uh, j is less than days elapsed. And then we're going to add one to working month plus plus. And we are going to add the number of days. We're going to add to the number of days the um, what do we call it? 
number of days in month array j and that should leave us with a working month You know what, I, I think <laughs> this isn't going to give us what we need, is it? This is just going to give us a month number. But it will leave. What we need is, once we've reached that month, we need the number of days into the month that we're in. don't we? So what we need to do is, first of all, where's that array with all the, the stuff in? Should we make that a, uh, should we make that reusable? I think we probably should. Let's jump down here and steal this. Uh, we'll do MB there. And then up here, that's where we'll put it. Uh, and we'll do public static int month number of days and then we'll jump back to there and we'll just use that uh, where is that it's here focus lib is that right So that we can use that again. And then in here, uh, this is going to be focus lib dot month number of days j. So what are we doing? When we get to five, so say it is five then we're going to add the number of days until we pass days elapsed. Let's just mute that. I think we should probably Yeah, so the, the problem is what we're doing here is we're just adding the number of days willy-nilly, but what we need to figure out is what's the the delta or the difference between um, the days elapsed value and the day that we're actually looking for, the, the input day, if you like. So do we have, where is input? input months and input days. So we need input days, right? And what we need to do is we need to do something with input days. So I think we need to do something along the lines of if um, days elapsed plus focus lib uh, month number of days J, so the number of days in that month would take us over input days does that work so we're looping through let's say that we put in that we wanted it to happen on the third of every month, right? And we're looping through. On the first iteration of this loop, 
days elapsed is zero. No, it's not. Working day is zero. And that's working day of year. So on the first iteration, uh, J is zero. Do I do that? Yeah. So J is zero, working day equals zero, and we're gonna add to it, we're gonna say if the working day, which is zero, plus 31 is more than input days. Now that's gonna fire straight away. So that's not what we want. What we want is, Sorry guys, I'm gonna to have to take this call. Just give me a second. Sorry about that everyone. Um, no emergency, we're all good. So what, what are we doing? Have a think, Carl. Working day is in years. So I think what we actually want to say is if, if it would take us over days elapsed, right? Is that right? My brain is terrible today, terrible. I've got that Friday feeling and nothing is working. So let's, this is what I usually do when I'm having trouble. Working day of year, working month, right? So that's gonna make me hopefully see this in the proper light. Working day of year. So we're looping through and every time we do it, we are adding the number of days in a month to this working day of year. So on the first iteration, we add 31 days. On the second iteration, we add 28 days. But if we wanted, say, February the 3rd, then that takes us over where we want to be. So what I need instead of top of year is the top of the month. That's what I need. I need the top of the month. So all that logic we wrote at the end of yesterday's stream was wrong. Because what I need is, once I've got the top of the month timestamp, I can diff the working day timestamp from the top of the month timestamp, divide that by 86,400, and that will give me the number of days that have elapsed in that month. That's what I need. So I need to get the top of the month. Have I already done that somewhere? No. All right, let's jump back up. All right, so now that I know what I'm doing, I know that what I need is int top of month. That is what I need right now. So how do I get that? Well, I could do, I'm iterating through and I need to get to the point where this is the last iteration. 
So what I need to do is say if it's more than days elapsed, then it's the difference between the working uh, day of year then top of the month is just working day of year and then break right is that right and do I need working month I don't think I do although it would be good to see it from a debug perspective so I'll to do remove that and then once I've got the top of the month uh, days elapsed um, day of month is just the uh, top of working day minus the top of month in brackets divided by 86,400 right now TZ offset if top of working day or if day of month equals input days that's what I was looking for right there so from that I can then go on to write it into the slot table which happens here and that's duplicate code but we just want to get things working and we will refactor later uh, that's fine that's fine 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 okay I would very much like to make sure this is working so I'm going to debug it. I believe it's the 18th today. Comment from Grant or Bart. Java. This is Java. This is Java. And you've just reminded me of the scene from the, uh, the 300 where he says, this is Sparta. And then in my head, I am kicking Android Studio into that well. All right, let's set a breakpoint. This may be horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, I'm fried this week. I'm moving house next week, and uh, yeah, it's quite stressful. Let's have a look. Let's run the debugger. Okay, so we're going to set up schedule tasks day of month and what's the date today the 18th so we'll do the 19th of every month okay a uh, day of month at 4 a.m. for 30 minutes on day 19 we'll do uh, something new which we do monthly such as uh, howl to the moon no goal and here we are we're in where have we stopped? Stop here. Uh, should we jump to the next breakpoint and see if it fires? There we go, we got it. Uh, top of year. So that should work. Bear in mind that's not local, so that is probably going to stop this from working. But we just want to check uh, what happens. So top of month equals naught. So days elapsed equals 136 in the current year. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. So working day of year is zero. And if we add 31 to that, we get nowhere near the days elapsed. So let's jump over that. That should add 31 to working day of year, which it does. Working month, we should increment by one. Uh, J, we increment. And then we go in again. So this is going to add February. 
that should have added uh, 28. Yes, that's right. Uh, so we added another 28, which means that working day of year gets added. So we go to 59. We move working month to two. This should do March, which add another 30. Now we're adding April, which should add another 30, right? So that should take us to 120. It does. Now this is the interesting one. This is May. So we come in. We're looking for 136. That should fire because adding May, which has 30 days, does it? 30 days has September, April, June, and November. Maybe 31. That would take us over 136. So we go in here and we set top of month to working day of year. And what is working day of year right now? Let's just check that. 120. Ah, that's where we're wrong, isn't it? We're adding days, not second. Not we're adding days, not seconds. So what we need to do there is change that to be 120 times 86,400. Yeah, so that's going to be broken. We should stop immediately. Rerun it. And start again. Uh, this time I'm going to remove this breakpoint because it's in the way. Schedule tasks. Day of month. Uh, 30 minutes at, we'll do 5 a.m. this time, just in case anything got written to the database that we didn't want it to, which it did actually, it got wrote into the prototype table, didn't it? So let's just do it at six, so that's uh, it's not in the way. Uh, 30 minutes, 19, go. Uh, Howl to the moon, appease the gods, I guess. Here we are, we're back. So we'll go through January. February, March, April, and now May, all right? We jump in, we say, okay, this fires, top of the month is set to some number since the top of the year. So we need to add top of year to that as well. Okay, and yeah, I feel like that should be okay, but we need to apply the time zone offset to it as well. So when we come down here, um, Yeah, I feel like we need to apply the time zone to that. So if you look at here, we're using the same function. Year from timestamp. Where do we get year from? Yeah, there. Do we need to apply the timestamp to it? Does top of year give us? Let's check it. Source timestamp. I'm 
not sure. We'll have to have a look. When we're debugging. Let's run it again. Day of month. So uh, we'll do this one at 8 a.m. 19. Go. We're back. So January, February, March, April, May. Okay, so here, day of month, and this is for today. Is it 18? No, it's 16, so we screwed up somewhere. We screwed up somewhere. Hmm. Ah, we're a day behind we're a day behind first of all because this probably should have been um yeah it should always be plus one because it's zero indexed we're doing it from zero not one uh, so the first thing we need to do is add that because the top of month is actually the 31st of January, isn't it? So I think uh, top of month is working day of year plus one. And also we screwed up with our math because what it would have done is working day of year times 86,400 and then added it to the top of the year. Let's try that one. And it might just be a good idea to nuke the database. Storage, clear data. There we go. Jump back in to the debugger. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what we do now. Let's do it at 2 a.m. 19. Go. A new task. Howl at the moon. No go. Here we are again. Down we go. Into the rabbit hole. January. February. March. April, May. So this, we do top of year. Ah, this is in seconds. That's in days. So that was right. My math is screwed up. Working day of year, that's in days. So it needs to be this plus one. Not this. And like that, perhaps. Again. Day of month. 4 or 5 a.m. this time, day 19. Go, howl at the moon, no goal. And again. One, do you know what? Let's just add a break point here and then we can just resume.
Where is working month three, four, and then this is the one, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, so now we have top of month. That looks more reasonable. And day of month has gone to 15 now. Why? Why would it have gone back one? So we did 120 times 86,400 and it was actually 121 because plus one. So that gave us 10 million seconds. And then we added that to the top of the year. So the top of month it gave us, let's copy that value and have a look at Epoch Converter and see what happens. Wednesday, May 2nd. So we're off. That plus one shouldn't be there. That is causing a problem. Okay, so we can do this now. We don't need those brackets anymore because that multiplication will happen first. Okay, so that was right all along. So maybe that the time zone offset is incorrect. So let's have a look. Could it be the time zone offset? Because we need to minus an hour. Not sure. I'm not sure. Schedule tasks. Day of month. 9 a.m. Day 19. Go. Okay, next January, February, March, April, and May. Come in here, we get the top of month. Let's check the top of month. Tuesday, May 1st. So the top of month is working, but it's in GMT we would need to minus that, won't we? I don't know, it's right in UTC and we'll stick with UTC until we have to compare it. Uh, so what's the next thing we do? We jump down and we do, we should jump over this now and break out of this loop. We do, uh, day of month. So now we have top of working day, which is right now, minus top of month. Now top of working day, I think is local time. So that probably is where we need to minus the offset. Because that division is gonna screw up if we don't. Yeah, so that to do is perfectly placed. Let's steal this. Put that there. And then we'll do minus offset and see if that gives us what we are looking for. Please. Build failed. What have I done wrong? Time zone TZ. I'm redefining it. Uh, okay. So I guess if we take this, move it out of here, up to here, then we can use offset in here and it won't be a problem. That's fine. 
and this one we can just remove all that now all right that should be okay okay let's have a look Are we running a debug right now? We are. Okay, so jump uh, January, February, March, April, May. And I jumped straight over it, didn't I? What was working day of week six? That's way off. Way off. So I really screwed up there. Okay. Clear data again. We'll do this again and figure out just how stupid I am today because I'm in stupid mode today it's stupid call day stupid call Friday day of month at 2 a.m. day 19 how okay so jump down here this is January, February, March, April, May. Okay, here we are. Uh, input days is 19 and working day of year, sorry, day of month 16. We're still way off and it's to do with this. So we've got the top of working day. That's a timestamp. Top of month, that's a timestamp. And then we minus the offset. So let's figure out where that got us then. Uh, we started with. So we did top of working day. Let's just evaluate that expression. That does not look right to me. That's not right at all, is it? Oh, of course it's wrong. It's wrong because no, it's not wrong. Yeah, this gives us a number of days, doesn't it? Minus the top of the month. Minus offset. Minus one, minus offset. I don't know. And I've just jumped to a file I didn't want to jump to. Hmm. I think we should call it a day here, guys. And I think we should come back to this with a fresh head on Monday. So I'm going to put a to-do in here. To-do, Carl, you are having a bad day. Your brain is not working have a break and come back to this when you 
are on form. It's not very happen this, uh, not very often this happens, guys. But um, sometimes you have to just think to yourself, I am not a peak performance today. And rather than battling on against insurmountable odds, just take a break. And that's what I'm going to do. So we are a little bit closer, aren't we? We're a little bit closer than we were. If anyone's got any questions about anything we've done today or not done today, put them in the chat and I will have a look at them. Uh, I'm going to check these changes into version control and then I'm going to wish you all a good weekend. So end of episode 42. Started implementing day of month logic only to find that we had um, written code that gives us the month number and not the day of month. Therefore, we started at a disadvantage. On top of that, too much coffee and a long week means I am fried and therefore I need to come back to this. There we go, let's commit. Uh, commit, commit, brilliant. Don't have any questions in the chat for today guys, so as always, if you're late to the stream and you want to catch up on previous episodes of the show, you can find me on YouTube uh, if you search for Coding with Carl, and that's Coding with a K and Carl with a K. Uh, everything is in the Zero to Android playlist, the previous 41 hours of the show, and soon the 42nd hour, which is this hour, will be uploaded as well. Uh, I'm going to wish you a good weekend. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you get nice weather. And I will be back on Monday at uh, about 7.30 p.m. UK time. Uh, no doubt this office will look slightly different because I am packing up to move house. So we're going to be in a position next week where the stream may, ha may have to go on hiatus depending on the speed of my internet connection at my new house and how fast I can get some kind of studio set up there. But I'll keep you posted on that. And uh, if you check the updates in the chat or you subscribe to me on YouTube or you follow me on Twitch, um, I'll do my best to get those updates to you. Okay, guys, uh, take care, enjoy coding, and see you soon. Bye.